Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business radio show studio. I'm Sean Murphy, my co-host is... Mikhail. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what, what is the matter with us? Like, I don't know. Can't even get our names out now. Never mind. If you're a regular listener, you'll know. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know. Bit, I don't know. We look loopy. at each other Never and mind. I think that's what the Just problem is. Just start laughing. Yeah. Uh, no, that doesn't sound very nice. No, does it doesn't. <laughs> Okay, our guest in the studio today is Jeanette Forder. She is the owner and CEO of Phoenix Wellness Coaching. They are a Kent-based business supporting individuals and organisations to thrive together through menopause. Amazing. Also in the studio with us, and she may be joining in with the conversation, we'll see what happens, is Desiree Nurse, who is the founder of Cleopatra's Legacy, a community interest company based in Chatham um, that helps people through their hair loss beauty journey. Jeanette is also a VIP exhibitor at the Women in Business Big Show, which is thank you so much for being there and supporting us and taking part. And the event is on August the 8th. Yes. At this Long- year? Yes. <laughs> Longfield Academy. At Long- I just- how we actually put the event on, I've got no idea. I was speaking about it at an FSB event last yeah, night. I said, come and speak about it. And in the corner, there's somebody going, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> where, where is it? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I just Hon- read it. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I don't know. So welcome into the studio, Jeanette. Thank you for having me here. <sighs> so, um, menopause, but... I'm mean, saying, but you are a little bit different to some of the people that mm-hmm. I come across who are helping people with menopause because you support the individuals themselves and you also support the organisations, the companies, businesses, different places that are dealing with other people's menopause very often, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and if you sort of want to keep an excellent workforce, if you've been happy with somebody before and you want to keep them, you sort of need to do something to to make that happen but also um thinking sometimes it can cause misunderstandings problems with other members of the workforce and it's just a topic that needs to be dealt with i don't you know i i I saw um it wasn't you who showed it to me michael i saw a picture recently of a lot of women sort of 40 and 50 years ago who were in their 50s who had basically that was it they put they they put on their knitted cardies and that was it now yeah it was a slippery slope downhill with you know baking banana bread and blancmange <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> oh how times have yeah. changed <laughs> and uh, yeah and and that was it really they were too old for makeup or anything <laughs> or anything or anything like that and as far as sort of cosmetics went they were really just sort of putting talc under their armpits yeah and uh, Oh, thank God things have changed. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> and that was it. You know, as, as, as people, you know, sort of half the population on the planet, we were finished, basically. Yeah. So fortunately, those days are no longer here. But that doesn't mean that there aren't sometimes some issues that people and that everybody needs supporting mm-hmm. around menopause. So I think I think what we'll do, we'll do what we normally do, which is get Jeanette to, to share her story with us. And if you can just sort of tell us how you ended up where you are now and what you do with people and the types of people that you work with. Absolutely. So I'm going to start a bit further back than where I am now. So imagine me aged 17, done shorthand and typing and all sorts of um, interest, really interesting things. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) What we did. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, staying on doing A levels, being told by your parents, love them to bits, but being told by them, oh, if you do shorthand and typing, you'll always have a job. We know now with computers that's not the case. But there I was doing this, wanted to go out and be top secretary, get a great job. So applied for a number of roles and was put into the management training programme interviews for Barclays Bank. I didn't know I had aspirations to be a management trainee, but I thought, you know what, I'm a girl, I've got the brains, I can do this. Everything was going absolutely fantastic. Getting through all the interviews, it looked like a dead cert. You know, that horse that's going to win the race? I was there. I was riding it to the end. Nobody behind me. I was winning. Until I got the phone call that said, 
I'm sorry, you haven't got the job. I was absolutely devastated. There I was at 16, 17, been told in my life by my head, school headmistress and other role models, you can do anything you want, girl, just go and do it. Mm-hmm. And our door shut. Fortunately for me, my dad worked in Barclays Bank. So okay. he pulled some strings and went around and said, so why didn't my daughter get through? And they turned around and said, oh, yeah, well, she's got a boyfriend. What? And wow, she's likely to get married and have children. We don't want to invest in her. Now, back in 1982, yeah, I'm that old, it was acceptable to do Mm, that. It's not now. That was my first experience of discrimination being a woman. Yeah. And it set me on a path of there has to be a different way. Mm -hmm. So in all of my various careers, I have always looked at the place of women in the workplace. I've spent 20 plus so I say 20 plus, it must be 25 plus by now, years working in HR, looking at gender diversity. Okay. So raising that flag and saying, hang on a minute, what are you doing here? What's happening with these women? Mm. Not once since that experience had I thought I'm going to see discrimination again Mm. until I hit perimenopause and my 50s. Mm. And that second glass ceiling is... So hard to break through. Yeah. I was completely so surprised. I was working in the civil service in a very senior role and suddenly I was struggling. Mm. So I went down with anxiety and depression. Never never suffered with those before. Always been a very upbeat, positive person. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I was knocked for six. I couldn't get myself out of bed. I couldn't work out how to get dressed in the morning let alone drive to the station, didn't even know what my name was half the time. Yeah. Really, really debilitating. Mm -hmm. Went to the GP, lovely lady, very nice, gave me antidepressants. Oh, it's workplace stress. At that point, at age 47, I took that. Nobody mentioned perimenopause to me. Mm, So I took the antidepressants. I had four months off work, did a lot of work to get back into the workplace But that was just the start. I then had migraines. Mm. I put on weight. I wasn't sleeping. Mm -hmm. My insomnia drove my my long-suffering husband literally round the bend because I could not sleep. I'm somebody that doesn't like doing iron in the housework. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with that one. It's the least favourite thing to do. But there I was, (laughs) three o'clock in the morning, doing the ironing because I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you're anxious again and it becomes a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. Nobody spoke to me about perimenopause I had a form of contraception that stopped my periods so the usual signs that you would see in changes in periods didn't show up wow I'd never talked about menopause Mm -hmm. to anybody my mum never spoke about it it just wasn't the done thing no of course it took me until I was age 55 to get the support I needed through the GP Um, and I remember going into the surgery she kept me waiting quite some time, so I have a bit of a short fuse at times. So mm-hmm. the first thing I did was tear her off a strip for keeping me waiting. And then when she said, oh, I've got your blood tests and your estrogen is really low, your progesterone is really low, mm-hmm. you're definitely, I would say by now, fully postmenopausal. Do you want to talk about that? And then I burst into tears. And mm-hmm. she's like, oh, those mood swings are for sure. Mm-hmm. And I got HRT at the time, which, again, I took... It worked for me for a time, but I've tried different things since. Mm -hmm. But during that time, trying to hold down the senior role that I was doing, trying to lead a team that suddenly I didn't want to have anything to do with. The job disinterest was just, I had no passion for it, didn't like what I was doing. Actually found that my mood swings were so bad that I was really angry person. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm usually quite calm or I can keep the Mm -hmm. anger in check. Couldn't do it. Absolutely couldn't do it. Was The team was suffering. I was suffering. Did not know what to do. Thankfully, at that point, enter my 40-something-year-old male boss, who was very good at having what he called well-being conversations. So he separated it from performance. He said, this isn't about anything to do with performance. This is just about you and you're not yourself. And that was like the best thing he could ever have said to me. Mm-hmm. He'd Thankfully, didn't say you must be menopausal because I think I would have thrown a chair at him at that of point. Course. Of course. But we had a conversation 
And whilst he said to me, I can't solve everything for you, what's the biggest problem? Mm. And for me, it was sleeplessness, which led to anxiety, brain fog, all those things. So you couldn't function. Yeah. So he said to me, you have the, the kit, work from home on those days. When you haven't slept well, don't come into the office. That'll give you two hours back. You don't need to commute. And I could have it. I could have cuddled him, although he was based in, you know, in Durham. So it was quite difficult when I was in London. Yeah. But if he'd been in the room, I would have grabbed him and kissed him. It was such a relief. But equally at that same time, I was starting to feel overlooked, invisible. All the good jobs and projects that I should have been doing leading my team were going to other people. Mm. I would sit in meetings and make suggestions, challenge the leadership team. And it was as if I was speaking a foreign language. Yeah. As soon as someone else said that, oh, yes. Yes, John, absolutely agree with you. Mm. And I'm like, I said that? What's going on here? So it was really, really difficult. And then we went into COVID, which working in government was, like it for everybody, not much fun. We all worked from home, which was fantastic because it gave me four hours back in my day. And I used that to get myself a life coach. Because I went, there has to be something else. Yeah, There has to be something else. Who am I? What do I want to do? Where am I going? Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time sitting down, it was like a group coaching and we were supposed to explain why we were there. And I said in floods of tears, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I want. In fact, I haven't even told my husband I've given you £800 to do this. Yeah. Because I'm kind of embarrassed by it. Mm -hmm. And it was that thought of everybody needs a little help in hand at times. Mm -hmm. And that coaching sessions for me, that eight weeks of coaching through COVID were mind blowing. Out of those sessions, Phoenix Wellness Coaching was born. Because for me, the whole issue with experiencing menopause and in the workplace, in a workplace that isn't really set up for what we go through as women at any stage of our lives, but particularly at that stage. And in August of 2020, I set up Phoenix Wellness and I was doing that role part time, still with the day job and nothing was working. And my husband, he's super, super calm and he's put up with me walking away from jobs in the past. We sat down, we had a conversation and he said to me, well, why don't you go all in? Just go all in and do it. You're happier when you're doing this. And yeah. I was talking to clients. I had clients already one-on-one, -on -one, which again is a little bit of that, oh my God, I've really got to do this now. And it's like, yes, this is what I want to do. So I actually took me until October to resign. And then I walked away in December, 2020. I mean, why wouldn't you set up your own business in the middle of a pandemic? If you can do then, you can do it anytime, really. Walked away and I remember on the 1st of January, 2021, I'd left in December saying, I don't want to start another new year feeling as bad as I do now. I want to feel good. Mm -hmm. And I sat there on the 1st of January and thought, okay, I've got a diary, I've got a laptop. What next? Yeah. So it was all really new for me. My parents said to me, you know, don't understand what you're doing, but if this is what you want to do, we're proud of you and all of that. And I said, yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. And they said, well, have you talked to your brother? Now, I don't want to talk to my older brother. I've spent all my, all my years following him around. He's always the one that does everything first. But hey, he's got his own business. He might be able to help. It's like, oh, yeah, that's true. So sat down with him and he fired questions at me like, what's your launch budget? Well, how are you going to get marketing? What are you going to do? Where's your client base? And none of this had I thought about. So I did. He kind of acted as a mentor. And I started to actually reach out through social media, actually just tell my story. Because for me, I struggled through perimenopause. I struggled to accept that I was at this stage of life because, you know, as we said earlier, it's usually the end of your life. It looked like that. It's like, okay, you're on the scrap heap now. And I didn't want to accept that. Yeah. And I also, having spent years working in HR on gender diversity, didn't want to accept that for thousands and thousands of women it felt like that at work mm -hmm. they couldn't get the promotions they were leaving the workplace and it's like how can you have this amount of talent leaving the workplace 
choosing to be economically inactive or even not choosing, but just feeling that that's the only option for them. And I said, my passion is to make this better for women. So sitting down and working one-on-one with women because menopause is actually, it can be a really positive experience. Believe me, I'm sweating buckets in a small room at the moment, so it doesn't feel like it. (laughs) But it can be really positive because it's a chance to reinvent yourself. Yeah. Because you will be different as you come out of it. And I just wanted other women to feel like that. But I realised we can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And also menopause isn't something that, just impacts the woman going Mm. through it. Mm. It impacted my husband because of my grouchy moods and my lack of sleep, my anxiety. He didn't understand it. He was battling with it, trying to go into work and do shifts and things like that. So it affects relationships. It affected my team in the Mm -hmm. office Mm -hmm. because I didn't have the patience or tolerance for them. So it's a much bigger issue than just, okay, you're getting hot flushes, here's some patches. Mm -hmm. It's much, much bigger. And the psychological impacts are huge. Yeah. And I felt, actually, whilst I was lucky I had a boss that tried to understand and tried to help, so many women don't have that. Mm -hmm. I had another boss who was Mm -hmm. the complete opposite. Strangely, woman, similar age, complete opposite. Don't understand what you've got to worry about. I've gone through it. I'm okay. Not everybody's like that. No, they're not. Mm. Yeah. So it's... Actually, I felt I need to use my HR experience, my trainer experience and go back into organisations to talk to them about it. And whilst there is a brilliant, you know, the moral case is you, why wouldn't you want everyone to thrive at work? Yeah. That's a no brainer. Mm-hmm. But actually, that doesn't always hit the bosses at the top mm-hmm. table. Mm-hmm. So actually, can you afford to lose 10% of your workforce? Mm. You've got 8% of women that won't go for promotion. Can you afford to lose that talent? Mm -hmm. And if you get it really wrong, which some people do, you could have unlimited amounts of at a tribunal, unlimited Mm -hmm. claims coming through. Do you really want that? So I now spend all of my time going back in, talking to organisations, raising awareness, teaching line managers how to have that difficult conversation Mm -hmm. because we expect line managers to be able to do it. Mm. But we don't teach them. Yeah, They're human, but sometimes it's really difficult in the workplace. Mm. And I'm just so passionate about things need to change. Also, not just that, at the GP surgeries. You know, they they do a great job. NHS is fantastic, but they don't always get it right. And they don't do enough training. So we need to be getting my soapbox out and standing up there and breaking that ceiling down again. Mm. And that's, I've been doing this now for mm, just under four years. Mm Mm-hmm. It's morphed a lot. We now have a not, I say we because I work really closely with a menopause specialist nurse. So we can offer different services to organisations. But we also have a not for profit um, menopause cafe that we now run as well. And I get so much joy out of that. It's unbelievable. But hearing Mm. the stories, it's frightening what Mm. some women are struggling with. So. Where you are now is that you are supporting individuals, but you're also out there and you're supporting businesses and organisations to, I suppose, manage the menopause in the workplace. I think one of the problems potentially, just sort of listening to what you're saying, is that sometimes in in organisations there may be an understanding and a will to do something about it because, you know, who really wants to end up in in a tribunal? Um, But it... It still comes down to individual prejudice, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, it and does. it could be it could be that somebody doesn't like you because you just annoy them because they are scared of you because mm-hmm. of all sorts of things, and the menopause issue just sort of can feed in can feed into that. Doesn't yeah. it? you can't take yeah. the people out of it, no, can you? No, really? absolutely not. I agree. Yeah. So, what 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 do you think? I'm I'm going to t- tackle challenges from two angles now. What is your biggest challenge what has been your biggest challenge from sort of moving forward into the corporate arena so I think um I've kind of made that transition quite smoothly because of my HR background Mm. so big big network that's helped me to get in there and also sort of um if if you like a bedrock qualification and experience actually in there yeah 
Okay. Uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Has oiled the wheel, shall we yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you're a known entity, shall we say, it makes life easier. Mm. Okay. But I think the biggest challenge is actually getting employers to understand that it is something they need to do something about. Mm-hmm. A lot will say, well, surely isn't that a personal thing? Why do we have to do something about it? Mm. And it is a case of actually showing them, if you do something about it, how good it can be for your organisation. And just pointing out the reputational pulls there. Mm -hmm. You know, you will be able to keep these staff. And if you've got happy staff, we know happy staff breed happy customers. Your customer service Mm. is going to be good. You'll get them doing more hours than they get paid for. You know, it's hard-nosed business. When we're happy and yep. engaged, we give more. Okay. So surely you would want that. Can I just yeah. say something? I'm an employee myself of women of eight. Mm-hmm. And I talk about menopause with them yep. because, you know, I'm brilliant going for it myself. But they feel very um, taken back by it. They don't want to talk about it. There's, It's okay employers actually putting something into place, but it's actually getting the women to want to come and come forward and say, actually, yeah, I have got a problem. I do want to talk to somebody about this. So how do you deal with the opposite sort yes. of situation? So what I would normally do is you need to put in... You need to have things in place that make women comfortable to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Don't force them. Okay. Because I didn't want to be forced. No. I didn't want to talk about it mm-hmm. myself. But actually by having all of these systems in place, having opportunities for people to learn about it, stuff on your intranet mm-hmm. so they can go and Google it themselves and yeah. things like that will make a big difference because it's saying to them, this is a safe space. Yeah. Should you want to talk about it, yeah. our ears are open. We okay. will listen. Yeah. But again, you know, I have managers say to me, well, how do I have that conversation? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you don't sit down with someone and say, well, I'm looking at your CV and I see you're 45. You must be almost <laughs> perimenopausal. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not as blunt as that. No, it's not. But it, they feel that. It's like, no, what you should be doing as a good manager You have pastoral care for your staff. Yeah. So it comes into that. So think about, as my boss did, having a well-being conversation. Yeah. It's like, how are you actually doing? What's going on in your life? Uh, Actually, I I listening to this now, Mm -hmm. what I'm hearing, and and I'm sort of imagining myself in that sort of situation, is that there's a big difference between let's have a well-being conversation. You would have that conversation with anybody, okay, with let's have a discussion about menopause. Yeah. So for me, I, I'm, I'm not empl- I, I employ myself. I, I run a business. But, you know, for me, very often going out and doing what I do, meeting different people, having stuff, doing, if you like, my job, I don't want to talk about the menopause. No. Yeah. I just don't want – I'm not – that's not why I'm there. I want to get on with what I'm there to do because I really enjoy doing it. I don't want to talk about my bits. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> okay. I just don't. It's because in a way it's almost like that is my time out yeah. of thinking about my bits and what may, what may or may not that's be happening with them. And I don't want to almost sully that time with bringing my personal life and personal mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. into that space. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. totally get that. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to. Yeah. And so I think if somebody had approached me when I was employed, goodness knows how, what they said. <laughs> these poor people, honestly. <laughs> I think that were the people that employed yeah, me. Yeah. These, these, poor, these poor people, you know, are quite happy having, an, having appraisals. And I think if somebody had said as part of that, as part of the general stuff, hey, let's have, you know, let's have a conversation about wellbeing. Is there anything that you're struggling with? Is there mm. something that we can do, mm-hmm. you know, yep. that would make life easier? Actually quite happy. But I do not want to go and talk about my periods, yeah. my menopause yeah. or any other personal problems yeah. that I might have, mm-hmm. any mental health issues. Mm-hmm. I just don't because that's my safe space, actually. Being at work and being doing yeah. what I'm doing mm-hmm. is my safe space. But I do think that having information readily available absolutely signals yeah. Yeah. signals that actually, you know, if you are struggling, yeah. we are sort of open to hearing about how we can help. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we're all, you know, I didn't really want to talk about it. I knew there was something going on, but Mm -hmm. I didn't want to talk about it. 
And a lot of women are like that. It's like, I don't want to be labelled as menopausal. No, I'd, for, me, yeah. for me, it wouldn't mm. be that at all. It wouldn't be about, I don't want to be labelled. It's just, I'm here, this is what I'm doing. My head is in this space mm. now. And I don't particularly want to bring that into it. So I think there are lots of, I think there are lots mm. of different reasons why, why anybody may not, want mm. to, may not want to talk about it. That's true. I think for a man, mm-hmm. um, I think for a guy, it might actually be quite refreshing if... He is is dealing, living with somebody who is going through the mm. menopause. So he's got all of this stuff yeah. going on and actually nobody to talk to about it yeah. because he may not even realise. I mean, is it what do, – do, do, do blokes go down the pub and go, I'll tell you what, mate – God, it was awful last night. She it was having, was well, she? She was having one yeah. of her oh, flushes. She's crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. perhaps maybe they do. Yeah, yeah. But, they do. but I think it would be, I think it would be quite nice and also quite normalising yeah. if businesses um, actually said, "Do you know this could be what's happening if you have a partner? Um, you know, this may be something that you're dealing yeah. with, mm-hmm. and and acknowledge the fact. You know, you said your husband wasn't yeah. sleeping yeah. because you weren't sleeping, so yeah. Yeah. you're up ironing. I can't imagine that to be honest. <laughs> it hasn't happened for a yeah, long no, time. No, 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 no. It's not something I do during the day. No, no, exactly. <laughs> I certainly can't imagine doing it at night. But never mind. I think we we all go and do odd things, don't we, when we're, when we're dealing with stuff. Um, but he was struggling with that as well. And and so perhaps having somebody at his place of work going, do you know, are you having, you know, have you got sleeping issues or any other yeah. sort of issues just as part of a wellness yeah. conversation? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. yeah and definitely. that's how I kind of approach it with employers mm. because it is difficult and everybody's journey is different. People want to talk about it. People don't. Mm-hmm. But actually knowing that there is support there. Mm. Especially if, as we know now, it could be difficult to get a doctor's appointment. Yeah. But actually, on your well-being website at work, you've got information that you can go and talk to somebody. Mm. It's yeah. having that there, knowing that actually, as an employer, we do want you to bring your, it's a bit cliched, your full self to work. And mm. we recognise that stuff happens outside mm. of the Absolutely. office mm. that you can't leave at the door. It comes in with mm. you. Mm. And it's just knowing that you have that space. And, and also that it may be actually part of what you bring in. Mm. Yeah. Th- you know, part of part of the um the gift that that your your contribution mm. to that workspace is because you are dealing with certain yeah. things and have certain experiences. I think I, I think one of the challenges with menopause is that it sort of isn't there and then it's sort of there and it may or may not be, mm. but we're not quite sure yes. Yes. and nobody really knows. Mm. And then it is and then it could be, you know, you could be running down the corridor with knives or you could be crying in a corner. Or you could be weeping in a corner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's it's that sort of unpredictable nature, but yeah. that you start off, if especially if you've got a long career in the same company, yeah. you start off being one person and then you, yes. and then you can sort of evolve and transmogrify into, into another one Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that your contribution has to change and in fact depending on where you are that experience brings brings more stuff in that's true can we talk Jeanette about some of the symptoms that people may be experiencing and this could be them their partners it doesn't really matter um, as business women now that you may be experiencing that uh, you may have no idea why or where, and that actually finding out that good heaven, this could be perimenopause or menopause, mm-hmm. and she so could go, okay, all right then, that makes a bit more sense. What are sort of some of the things that are overlooked? I think some of the big things that are overlooked is like my own experience, anxiety, mm-hmm. that sudden fear of doing the things that you always used to do, and you can't work so out a why. Generalized, a just yeah. a generalized. You're not yeah. scared about going. You're not going to the dentist. You're scared no. about that. It's just a generalized stuff's not yeah. right. Yeah, mm-hmm. or it's okay. that whole. Oh, I don't want to drive the car today because it's raining, and I, suddenly I don't like driving in the rain. Yeah, strange little things like that that, makes that can sense pop to me. up, or actually, oh, I've got to give that presentation. Oh my god, I can't do that. I'm going mm-hmm. to forget things. Second guessing yourself. Yeah, your confidence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, you go from you can go from being a really confident person that's quite happy in a, in that meeting, saying, "Hey, Bob, I disagree with that for these reasons." Yeah, absolutely. Suddenly, you can't even remember what his name is. Yeah, mm. you lose your words. You do losing yeah. losing your words is a massive, massive problem. Mm. 
and that is linked to brain fog, which yeah. people go, oh, yeah, brain fog. Mm. It sounds like a really flippant thing, mm -hmm. but it isn't. Mm. It causes you memory loss, forgetfulness, making mistakes, what confusion. Is what, I know I, we, we hear the term, I hear I've got brain fog. Mm. What is brain fog? Brain fog is where oh, there's lots of medical stuff mm. around the fact that oestrogen is really instrumental in cognitive functioning. And when you lose oestrogen or as you go through perimenopause, when it's spiking and dropping, mm. it creates different pathways in your brain. So actually, you might not be able to think straight. It's a common term for a collection of mm of symptoms and things that you can experience. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the symptoms of brain fog? So you will get um, forgetfulness. There you go. I couldn't even remember what I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I agree with you. <laughs> so if, perhaps if people are listening in, listen to what's being said now, OK? Everybody <laughs> forgetting what they're saying. Yes, yes. yes exactly. Yeah, OK, yes. yeah, we keep bashing microphones. Yes. Stuff's falling on the floor. <laughs> this is it. We're actually illustrating it now. Yes. But, yeah. but, but re <laughs> every single one of us. Yeah. But let's re re just go, go yeah. through the list, can you? So forgetfulness, memory lapses. Mm-hmm. You can get partway through a sentence and forget what you were going to say. Mm -hmm. Making mistakes. So things that you used to do and you used to do without even thinking about it, suddenly you can't do. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, maybe not turning up for meetings, forgetting where you're supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I do that habitually, but it's even worse. Then. <laughs> yeah. Then you get anxious about it. Yeah. You can get headaches alongside that as mm -hmm. well. Mm. And just that general fear of, I don't think I can do this. Mm -hmm. Don't think I can do it. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to have to do quite a lot of presentations and that. And I was typing and got to the word does. Couldn't remember how to spell it. Mm. It's only yeah. four letters, yes. but exactly. could not remember yeah. how to spell it. Mm. Yeah. And I had to ask someone. And then I thought, I I'm, I'm going mad. I'm mm. losing my yeah. marbles yeah. completely. Yeah. And so many women go to their GP thinking they've got early onset dementia. That's what, mm, yeah. yeah, that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. And it is, it's like, it's like you're in a fog where you can't see forward, mm. you can't see back. Yeah. And it's really, it feels really lonely mm -hmm. as well. So in the workplace, that can be doubly difficult. I mean, mm. it's bad enough when you're at home trying yeah. to, you know, get the kids to school and pack the lunches and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you add the things that you have to think about in the workplace yeah. and it makes it really hard, really, really difficult. I'm not sure what, what's worse it is that... So I was put into a chemical menopause, yeah. which meant that it was like I wasn't one day and then literally yeah. tomorrow I was. Mm -hmm. um, and so everything arrived all in one go. And so I sort of... And that sounds terrible. And it wasn't... I have to say, it wasn't a laugh here. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew... Mm -hmm. I knew I was I wasn't like that then and now I am. Yes. Therefore, bump 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 bump. And it meant that I could sort of talk about it and I knew what was happening. And I could say, It's no good, I can't remember that, so you'll just have to either deal with it or go and do the other thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but I think I think where it becomes really scary is where you don't actually there's no switch that flips, is there? Yes. That goes, Okay, not menopause, bing. There you go, menopause. Um, and you know what's yeah. happened. It, it doesn't sort of progress in a linearly that, where you can no. go, oh, it's that. Mm, yeah. yes. And I think I think that is actually far yeah. scarier because you start inventing things. Yes. Nobody's ever said anything to you. Oh. Nobody said, hey, you know, you're going to hit that day. Guess what? Monday morning, menopause. Yeah. So you, the yeah. things that are happening mm -hmm. very often have other other things that you yeah. can attribute them to. Yeah. And that is part of the problem. And mm. again... You will find, I think it's one in four women will have really debilitating symptoms, mm, which mm. means three in four don't, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. But every journey is unique mm. and different. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what's happening. You don't know what's coming. One day mm. you'll feel one way. The next day you'll feel different. Three weeks later, you'll feel different again. Symptoms come and go. Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. I was first thought about menopause, I thought, oh, yeah, hot flushes. Mm. Yeah. Well, actually, most women don't get those until they're very close to postmenopause. Mm. They just don't, the hot flushes don't happen as early on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, I hear lots of ladies say, well, I can't be in menopause because hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not getting in a flush. Yeah. So I, I think the other thing, let, let's, you know, for business women, 
um, who don't have an employer, it doesn't matter whether they've got that that sort of support yeah. because it doesn't apply um, to them. It's about perhaps really making sure that you are very well aware of some of the possible symptoms, actually not listening to anybody else. So getting a, a clinical almost list of symptoms, isn't yes. it? Not listening to what your aunt did or what mm. anybody else mm. did. Or, oh, it was no problem. I just sailed through it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you all sound like my mum. <laughs> um, it's none of that. Neither have you got the other side of it, which is the horror stories and yeah. everything. So you go into it almost sort of quite neutral. Here's a list of possible symptoms and add a few more onto the bottom yes. um, that you may experience. And if you if some of these happen, just, OK, where has this come from? What does this belong to? Is it something I need to talk to somebody about? Can I go to the doctor? Is it something I can get some help with? And I think it's also important not to brush things off as menopause mm, yes. as well, isn't it? Because yeah. you may have something um, that actually is not menopause related. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, very much so. And you need to think about that. You, there's lots of things like mm. um, thyroid problems that have similar if, symptoms mm. alongside them. So you do need to do that MOT. Is it still the case that it, I, I think as women, we hear a lot now, and especially as business women, I think there's loads of books, there's lots of podcasts, there's lots of programs, there's lots happening, there's loads on the telly. And it seems like there can't be a single person, <laughs> certainly not a single doctor in the entire country and probably the world who shouldn't be going, hmm, I wonder if that's a menopause symptom. But is it still the case that women are going to their doctor and being given antidepressants because they're depressed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two thirds of women that go to the doctor presenting what should be or seen as perimenopausal are being given antidepressants rather rather than having a conversation around what are the options? You know, there's HRT, there's natural remedies, there's yeah. other things you can do. It, they're it, not getting that conversation. It wasn't so, so, it wasn't so much what, what, what they're being offered to help with the menopause. Mm. It's more, is there, a, is there still a case where the recognition or the acknowledgement that, that actually what you're experiencing here, here could be related to the menopause? It doesn't happen. Some doctors, yes, but what I hear is more and more okay. women saying, I've been brushed off. When I've said, could it be menopause, I'm okay. told, well, that's no, a, you're too young. You see, that was my, that was my next suggestion, yeah. was that perhaps you go in and go and ask the question. Yeah. But even then, you're being, being people being brushed yeah. off. Do you know that it's an extra qualification for doctors to it do, is, to do all, menopause yeah. and they don't always take it, yeah. general practitioners? It's an optional oh, qualification. It's an optional qualification. Yeah. There are only a few consultants. You probably yeah. know Louise Nielsen. Yes. Yeah. I'm under her and she had to do these extra qualifications. Yeah. 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 I work with a British Menopause Society, right, accredited okay. nurse for that reason as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's with the 10-year um, women's health strategy. Yeah. There is guidelines in there saying that new GPs coming on must do the training. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. But I always say to women, the power needs to be in your hands. Yeah. Mm. So don't do like I did. Keep going back and not know what it is. Exactly. Arm yourself. So I have a questionnaire that goes through those symptoms. There's like 60 odd of them. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? How bad is it? Yeah. That will give you the results that will give you an idea of where you stand on that transition. Absolutely. Take that with you when you go to your GP and know what conversation you want to have. You'll only get 10 minutes. That's so right. have the That's conversation. Exactly so so this minutes. might be a good, a good point to say, how can people get hold of you? And do you have those questions? Are they able to get them from yes. you? Right, yep. okay. So how, how can people get hold of you and how can they get those questions? Okay. So the they can get hold of me, email Jeanette at phoenixwellness.co.uk mm-hmm. or they can WhatsApp me 0778 my website, which is phoenixwellness.co.uk, on the front page, it says, take our quiz. Ooh. Now, it's free. A lot of our listeners, nearly 50% of our listeners are in the USA. Mm-hmm. Those, What the situation is over there as far as uh, insurance goes, mm. doctors, how well qualified they are, what they know. Um, I'm not sure that that matters, to be honest, though. I think no. this I think this having having this yeah. questionnaire and being armed yeah. with it, because I suspect 
the conversations over there are very, very similar, similar. to the conversations yeah. that we're having here yeah. and that the conversations across the world yeah. are like that. Yeah. So it's sort of forewarned is forearmed and sort Absolutely. of going with at least a modicum of, of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, is modicum a word? Yes, is it modicum is. the right yes. word? You yeah, see, look, now so. I'm having yeah, modicum. Yeah. Yes, I think modicum. So. Yes, okay. it feels right to yes, me. Word. So yeah, it does. <laughs> it's a word that I know. But I seem to have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been making words up recently. Oh, but no, I think that one. is actually a real word. Yeah. Um, so I just want to tip very, very quickly onto... Hang on, shuffling of papers. Um, one of your books is a book I haven't heard of. So I'll make it sound like I'm some, some sort of like librarian <laughs> authority for books. But I haven't heard of that. <laughs> Your book list is yes. growing. How, yeah. how has that happened I, if I don't know about it? Um, it's The Second Half of Your Life by Jill Shaw Ruddock. Yeah, that's the first book I read about menopause. Wow. And it's it's not that big. It's quite a small paperback book, but it doesn't major on necessarily the physical, it talks very much from her perspective of what happened to her and focusing on what next. Because mm. menopause is midlife. It's average age in the UK of 51. Listen, I haven't got my cardi knitted, so... <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, knitting mine at the I, moment. I'm going to have yeah. to carry on. <laughs> yeah. But it happens midlife. You could have 40-odd mm. years more to live your life. So it's focusing on how can you live your best life from your midlife onwards. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really easy read. It gives you the facts. It gives you the information. It's quite amusing as well. Mm -hmm. I found myself, you know, folding pages down because I needed to go back to mm. reread that because that sounded just like me. But it mm. also gives you some really good tips on what you can do mm -hmm. to help yourself. Okay. I think I'm just going to become really difficult. Okay. I think I, I owe yeah, it. No, I have no choice. <laughs> yes, there'll be some some people will be out there laughing that uh, that I this has been easy so far. But, yeah. you know, I, I just I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's something like you know there used to be the comedy show with the old people in the. In the queue, and they say, "Going, I'm old. I go oh, yeah, No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to get that I'm sort. Of, no, I'm not going to be that sort of difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to be that sort of difficult. But uh, disruptive, maybe. Yes, disruptive's that's quite good, good, isn't it? Yes. I could be disruptive. Yeah. Right. So, hang on. We need to. We've got some questions that we need yeah. to ask here, haven't we? What's your typical clientele? Is it mainly in the UK, or can you do abroad as well? It is. It used to be mainly in the UK, mm -hmm. but now we do have clients from Canada and the USA, okay, and Sri Lanka as well. So, wow. oh, okay. because I can work one on one online, yeah, yeah that means I can. Mm. I can reach more women. Absolutely. But also, the same goes for employers. I will present you know, do workshops online or I'll do them face-to-face. -face. I mean, if someone Amazing. wants to pay for me to go to the USA to do a workshop, I'll be very happy to do it. <laughs> I'll come. <Yeah. laughs> right, well, that's it. We'll all pack that's our bags. We'll pack our bags. <laughs> so let's get on to some of the more sort of wild and woolly questions. What's your kryptonite? Oh, I think that for me is I'm too easy to say yes. Now, my husband will listen to this and say that's not true. Never. Yeah. But I can say yes yeah. because I get passionate about things. Yes. So I end up taking on too much. Yeah. Which when you're sole person doing the business, there's only you. You can't delegate. Yeah. I can delegate to the dog, but he's not going to do it as well. Yeah. So I have to learn to have those boundaries mm. and say no more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I 100%. I, 100%. That mm -hmm. is the best lesson I ever learned yeah. is what I say no to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I used to, in my role as a line manager, I used to say to my staff, don't say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. Don't volunteer. Be discerning. Mm, yeah. Be a bit selfish. What's good for you? And I go and say, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I know. What is your superpower? Mm -hmm. I am going to say it's the fact that I'm old. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is, it's my age. What is your top tip for being in business? Mm hmm, mm. So I think it's believing in yourself that you can do it. Yep. It's not really a tip, there's several. So believe in yourself that you can do it and find that thing that makes you want to get up every single morning and do it. Mm -hmm. And then get some good people in your camp that can help you to do it. Yeah. 
Your power team. Yes. Mm. Find yeah. those mm. people that have been there, done it, shrunk the T-shirt, mm-hmm. can show you the pitfalls, but are also going to be your cheerleaders yep. that will introduce you and open doors mm. and just want to support you all the way through. Mm. Absolutely. What do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out? Oh, so much. I have a business plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's actually how to be a business person. I started out with a passion to change the world for women in menopause. Yeah. No idea how to do it. And then where do you get the money to do it? How do you reach out to people? I wasn't a business person, mm. mm-hmm. so I didn't know how to make, make and close a sale. Yeah, quite a few people will mentor that are in businesses already yeah. to yeah. help. Yeah, like your brother. Has My brother, yeah. I don't, I don't want him to hear that he was no, instrumental. No, 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 but, no, no, you know, there are people you can reach out to and talk yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. I think very often you, you haven't got a business plan. And so the, yeah. the, the space that you find a business plan is actually a really seriously boring business plan, yes. isn't it? It's a sort of business plan that, that is geared for you to apply to the bank for a loan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really not the best business plan. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm. true. I think if you don't have a business plan, it's just ask as many questions yeah. as you can. Just keep asking questions. Who do I want to work with? Mm-hmm. Who needs this? What do they want? Who's mm-hmm. this? Who's this? Who, who, what, what, how, how? Yeah. And just keep asking as many questions as you can think. Yeah. And you know, don't worry too much about the structure at this stage. Yeah. Just keep asking questions. What's going to happen if? Yeah. Um, you know, how is that going to happen? Who does this? What, why, how, what if? Yeah. 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 True. I don't know what to say now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think should, should we consensus of, of a lot of menopausal women, all a bit peculiar, and not not of us, not quite all there. Can't read anything. I can't see what I'm doing. I can't remember what I've said or not. I think <laughs> I think I think it might be time for us to go. So, I think so too. Thank you bet. so much for listening to the Women in Business Radio Show. I'm Sean Murphy, my co-host today. Mikhail Yanni, is Mikhail Yanni Attard. <laughs> thank you. So so much to Jeanette Forder, who is the owner and CEO of Phoenix Wellness Coaching, um, for joining us and helping us through with the menopause. And thank you. Also, we didn't hear anything from her, but she was in the studio <laughs> and she played a vital role, actually, because she was laughing and joining in exactly. and, and helping us not to bang on the microphone. Exactly. <laughs> She's been it's brilliant. It's like being mum or being told. I tell you what, we, we have got to get this videoed, haven't we? Oh, yes. If I can ever remember to set the thing up, we will do. So thank you to Desiree Nassou, founder of Cleopatra's Legacy Community Interest Company. Thank you so much for everybody being in the studio. We are going now. And if you stay on to listen, you might actually hear Meet the Flintstones as our record as we finish. But never mind. Such is life. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody should listen to Meet the Flintstones. Thank you so much, folks. We are off now. Bye. 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 Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio show for more stories, ideas and inspiration to help you grow your business.